What's going on guys? In this video, I'm gonna be discussing how to actually control your load and to stop getting beat out front with everything that you're trying to swing at, okay? This is the most common topic that I get asked in my DMs on Instagram, TikTok, you name it. I get emails about this from parents trying to ask me how the son can actually control their load because they're constantly out in front during the game, okay? So if your issue is lunging, if your ass is out on everything that's off speed and you're tossing your hands across your chest, watch this video. I'm gonna break it down in a super easy format in a three-step process so that way you can implement this right now and hopefully make a big impact in your game. So I've talked about this a lot in previous videos, okay? But we have to be able to coil, step one, as much as we go up the back, step two, as much as we go forward, step three. In real time, that looks something like this, coil, as much as I go up the back, as much as I go forward, okay? When I can do those on a one-to-one -one ratio, I'm gonna be in a good spot to be able to control the speed, the tempo at which I load, how far forward I actually go in my load, so that way I can choose whether or not to swing right around ball release. So I'll have the ability to either hold it for just a tick second or let my swing go in that moment. What most people do, and this is where they get stuck, is they simply load back to then load forward. So if you're anticipating fast, but it ends up being slow, your choice to anticipate fast made you do this move and then this move on the fastball. And then it's slow and you end up with your ass out just throwing your hands, right? And so when you compare the average little leaguer or the low level hitter that's in high school or college, and you compare their takes compared to some of the best in the world right now in Major League Baseball, their takes are gonna look drastically different. Most of the younger, lower level guys are gonna be destroyed by too much forward, too much momentum, okay? They hardly ever coil too much, hardly ever go up the back too much. They're usually just too much forward. And so their takes often look like this, right in there, okay? When you look at some of the best players in the world, their takes often look like this. And then they try to come back and pull it back. Sometimes they can't and they end up making contact out here, okay, behind their body foul ball comes back off and then they pull back really hard, right? But they're doing things differently, okay? There's a reason why it looks different. And we should be able to try to copy them and their tendencies, okay? Just because you're a little leaguer, just because you're not 6'7", 280, doesn't mean that you can't copy what the best players in the world actually do. So that way you can get better at this game. All right, for step one, I'm gonna put a T here so that way you can get a really good visualization on where I'm at in space just because there's no plate or anything out in front of me. Okay, step one is gonna be the coil, all right? Now I've gone over this a lot in previous videos. I have a lot of other drills on our rear leg mechanics video. I'm gonna put it right up here so that way you can watch that as well. But I'm gonna go over a few of the steps and a few of the cues that I use with new guys who are trying to learn this move, okay? So the first thing that I like to start out with is what we call a stretch and fire. If you've watched any of my content, you know I obsess about this drill because it just gets a lot of things right. All right, so for this one, my plate's here, my pitcher's over here. I'm gonna put all of my weight on this back leg, okay? Just like a flamingo. I have a little bend in my knee just so I feel pretty athletic. From here, I'm just gonna put this toe down out here, all right? It's not weighted, but it's down. That's important to know, okay? Now from here, my head is over this back foot. All I'm doing to coil is I'm not letting my knee move and I'm trying to take my back right pocket towards the pitcher, okay? So I'm going around like this. Now there's a few other things that are happening in that moment because I have to be able to coil my whole body, okay? It's not just my rear leg. This is one fused unit, one fused unit in unison. If I only take my back right pocket over there and I just try to do this, that's not really gonna be a coil. I just put all the weight to my heel and I slip my hip and I just push my ass this way. That's not what I'm asking you to do. In this drill, head over the foot, athletic stance, little flamingo right here, toes out. I'm gonna pinch my scap Okay, you can do it two ways. You can clamp it down if that feels more comfortable. That's what I prefer. And some other people clamp it towards their spine. I don't really care. Whatever works best for you. For me, I clamp it down. But when I clamp that thing down and I go on and around this leg, I feel like my whole body is coiling around this leg. Okay, I can only go so far. If I don't have my scap clamped and I don't feel like I'm connected from my bat all the way to my leg, I just go like this. Okay, that's not one fused unit. That's gonna create two. That's gonna be a lot of hip shoulder separation when I swing, and then the barrel is gonna come last. All right, that's not what I want. I want the barrel to be first. I actually hit balls with my barrel, not with my hips. Okay, believe it or not. Okay, so stretch and fire full on. I'm gonna scap this clamp down. I'm on top 
of this leg, my knee's not moving, my toes are kind of gripping the ground, and I'm gonna take that back right pocket on and around towards my pitcher who's over here, okay? When I do that, notice my whole body goes around this, all right? That's step one, okay? Step two to learn how to actually load is not just gonna be the coil, now it's gonna be up the back. So this is what it looks like when I don't go up the back at all, I just pinch my scap, okay? All I'm focusing on is the coil on and around my body, that's it. Now, when I add up the back, look what happens. See how I start to kind of tilt down? Now, I'm not thinking about taking my front shoulder down, okay? That may work for some, but for me, I'm actually thinking about taking this meat that way. That's as simple it is, as it is for me, okay? For most of the guys I work with, that cue works out really well for them. So, on and around, okay, scaps down, back right pocket towards the pitcher, up the back. Now, I feel really wound up right here. I feel like the moment that I do this, my leg is just gonna burst me and I'm gonna be able to launch my barrel through the zone, okay? That's gonna be the coil and the up the back feel, all right? Now, if you need help with the coil, there's a few other things that you can do. One of them being where you're only focused on the coil loading you and unloading you. So no worry about up the back whatsoever. I always start out with this foot just a little internally rotated so that way I can cheat it a little bit, okay? And then all I'm gonna do is go around it. Now, I feel really wound up around my lower half. I'm not worried about my scap, I'm not worried about my upper back. I'm just going around the leg right in here. But I feel so wound up that if I pick this front foot up, I can feel my leg turning me, okay? So do a few feels like that, where you go around, and then you feel the leg turn you. Go around, and then you feel the leg turn you, okay? Then add the up the back. So now, go around, up the back, feel the leg turn you, okay? Around, up the back, feel the leg turn you. Notice that once I added up the back, my rear leg actually felt like it was gonna turn me forward, which is good. My leg does turn me forward in my normal swing. Okay, that's that feeling of when I actually snap the barrel, it drops into a turning leg. And so once I do this, I feel like it's getting caught by my leg turning me. And then that's where all the power comes from. It's from my, from my hip, from my rear leg. The speed happens right here. Now another exaggeration feel to get up the back even more is to exaggerate it way more than what you normally would. Okay, you gotta make sure I'm in a no stride that my scap is clamped down I'm gonna go on and around my rear leg and I'm going to exaggerate really taking my meat up there, okay? Taking this thing that way. When I do that as an over-exaggeration, I feel a lot of tension go right up my back, okay? Right up here. I feel it all the way down into my leg. Now, I'm not necessarily gonna do that when I swing, but I wanna be able to feel that stretch go up my back, okay? Step three is where we actually incorporate the forward move. I would recommend just starting with feels though, exaggerated feels, okay? One of the best feels that I like to use is if you've ever actually hit a catcher pop. So a fun go to your friends, you throw it up in the air, and then you try to hit a catcher pop. That feeling of a catcher pop is what I like to use, okay? We do it with a little bit of a happy Gilmore, so a little step into it. But now I'm incorporating all three things, okay? So right when I step here, I'm going to coil, go up my back, okay? Coil up my back, and then when I unload, I'm gonna unload like I'm gonna hit a catcher pop, all right? Here's the thing, I'm not actually gonna swing to feel these three things. I'm only focusing on the coil, up the back, and the forward move. So, coil, up the back, forward move. I feel my leg turning me forward. And my exaggeration in my mind is just to hit a sky high catcher pop, okay? Coil, up the back, forward move, right in there. Notice, I can do that and my knob starts to already go to the sky, okay? Coil, up the back, forward move, right in there. I feel a lot of tension around my hip, as I step, I feel it go up my back, and then when I launch, I feel my leg turning me forward, okay? Over-exaggeration feel. Probably don't do that in front of your coaches, especially if they don't like anything to do with the swing because then they're just gonna give you shit for no reason because they don't understand it, right? Now for our forward move, I prefer to work on two different forward moves, okay? The first one is where I have a big leg kick and I'm just working on controlling my up the back and around the leg, and for me, that works out well because I've always had somewhat of a higher leg kick than others. For others who prefer more toe taps, really low leg kicks, uh, where your foot barely comes off the ground and then goes back down, that's fine. But my recommendation for you is as you go around your leg and up the back to just hover this front foot out away from you, okay? A big cue for that is to keep your head over your rear leg as you do it. So an example would be, I'm gonna go on and around my leg, up my back, I'm gonna pick my leg up and hover it out there. As I start to hover it out there, I'm trying to keep my head over my back foot, okay? In training, I wanna be able to do that for a really long time, so it would look something like this as I do that. 
Now, you'll notice I'm going forward very little, but I have complete control of that. What happens when we're in a game is this ball starts moving and we get this ball anxiety, like we have to go get it. And all of a sudden, this move turns into this move. And we start to try to go forward too much. Then the ratio is off, right? But when I can go up my back, around my leg, and forward at the same time that my front foot comes up, I'm in a really good spot to hit. And I feel like I'm stacked over this real leg. Like I feel really powerful when I do that. Where I don't feel powerful is when I'm swinging in no man's land, I'm going too far forward and I have nothing but my arms in order to save me, okay? That's not a very powerful position. For the higher leg lift for me, this is how I hit, is I try to keep my head over this rear leg the whole time. And all I'm focusing on is getting to my spot, okay? So by the time he gets to ball release, I have my head over my back foot. I feel like I'm up the back, I'm around the leg. And however much I go forward, is simply between his fast and slow. So if it's slow, I'll go forward just a little bit more. If it's fast, I'll still be able to swing right there. So my normal stance looks something like this, and I'll go on and around forward, up the back, and it feels like I'm staying right here, but all of a sudden you turn the game on and it looks more like this, okay? But I have the ability to hold that for just a tick. You only gotta hold it for a split second, maybe a 10th of a second, if that, to be able to get a really high quality swing off on something that's slow but I also have to have the ability to immediately be able to swing right there if it's fast, which is important. If, you, if you're the guy, like I said at the beginning of the video, that just loads back to load forward, you don't really have a lot of time to hold that thing, okay? You're gonna be stuck in no man's land swinging with just your arms, which is not a good place to be. If you found this information valuable, do me a favor, like, subscribe, share this with some of your friends because we are trying to impact the game at the highest level. And if you need coaching on this specific subject, on hitting, on strength training, the whole nine. Our programming can provide that for you. All you gotta do is check the description down below and we'll help you out.